Hi everybody, do you got dinner? Someone's gonna come on and be like, how was it And I'll say, I'm trying. So yeah, we are gonna take a break today from the unsolved, which I've been going at and I'm gonna keep going at because they're my thing. But today's case has the most of the answers. Um, there is kind of several parts to it, it's an interesting story. So yeah, we'll just get right into it guys. So the main person in our story is Thomas Groom and there isn't a lot of information on him, I'll be honest. His father died in 1957 when he was just basically a baby and he would then be just in and out of children's homes. At six, he was sent to Artane Industrial School. Now I've briefly talked about this before and I have mentioned about the horrific abuse that went on there. So just please bear that in mind. After this, he would be sent to another one in Clamel in Tipperary. At 18, I think like a lot of people at the time, he joined the Defence Forces. He was there for three years and then he went on and just basically worked, like, worked on building sites and done odd jobs and stuff like that. He would get into trouble and he would have 13 convictions for kind of minor offences like larceny, traffic offences, things like that. He then went off to England and he would spend most of his adult life here. And he would continue to get in trouble with the law. Here, he would rack up 94 convictions. And these were for basically burglaries, theft, stealing cars. So he would get married and he would have children, although I don't know how many. I know he had two sons and one daughter, at least he could have had more. In 1999, he decided he wanted to move back to England. So at this stage, he he is not with like his wife anymore, they're separated. And so he's coming back and he wants to actually set up like a karaoke business here. So he moved into a caravan at the edge of a council housing estate, Churchview Heights in Edenderry, County Offaly. Now, I don't know if it was like a caravan park or what it was, but there was definitely several caravans there. There was actually this thing at the time, um, I, only, I only learned about it in a couple of years ago, but basically it was like while people were, were waiting for like their council house or else like, you know, waiting to save up the money for to buy, you know, to, to get a mortgage, to save up a deposit, they would like live in a caravan essentially in these little sites. So it could have been something like that. This caravan would have no electricity, it would have no running water, and it would have no toilet facilities. Weeks later, his son Christopher, who was 19, would come over with his girlfriend, Kelly Richardson, who was also 19, and their eight month old baby girl. So in this caravan that already doesn't have these you know basic facilities there are three adults and a baby living in these cramped quarters so a couple of weeks after the young family had come to join him on sunday the 14th of november so basically the idea was that he was going to work with his dad in the karaoke business and it was basically you know like that he was bringing kelly and their daughter over because he wanted to try and make something for them over there over here Two weeks after they had moved over, on the 14th of November, it was a Sunday, they, the two lads, set up in a local pub for the karaoke. Having arranged a sitter, Kelly decided to join them. So the night was described as successful, so they all decided to go out and celebrate in the local nightclub. Kelly would later say that there had been underlying tension between father and son, and at around 3am they all got back to the caravan. I don't know how the night went in the nightclub, whether words exchanged there, was there something more to it, but whatever happened, things went bad quickly. Kelly would later tell the court, Tommy was saying, get out of the bed with your clothes on, don't get into bed with your clothes on. Christopher said something at him and Tommy got mad. He bumped into me, ran up to the bed and punched him in the face. There was tea spilt all over the bed. Thomas was arrested at the scene and he would admit to Detective Sergeant Gerard McGrath that he had stabbed his son. I picked up the knife on the draining board. In the struggle, Christy and I fell backwards towards the door. I don't remember what hand I had the knife in. Christy fell on top of me front ways. It was after him falling straight on top of me that I had stabbed him. At this point, Kelly left. She ran to a local payphone, so she ran through all the caravan screaming. She went and um, rang the emergency services and then got back. And she says that when she got back, Thomas was holding Christy basically saying, like, don't go, like, don't leave me, don't go. I cradled Christy in my arms. I saw his face turn white in my hands. He said, Dad, why did you do it? 
Christopher was brought to Tullamore Hospital and, you know, efforts were made to try and revive him, but sadly he didn't make it. I don't know why there was a delay, but in September 2002, he was formally charged with the murder of his son. He would be kept on remand for six months and then he was granted bail. The case would go to trial in February 2004 and it would last two weeks. Kelly was obviously the main witness and so she was cross-examined for two days by both the defence and prosecution. The 47-year-old would plead not guilty to murder and the defence would say that Thomas said to Gardy, oh Jesus Christ, how am I going to live with this? On the 5th of March, the jury of seven men and five women took just under two hours of deliberation. They would find Thomas Groom not guilty of murder, but guilty of manslaughter. His wife, who he was separated from, would be in the court with him, along with one of their daughters, and his current partner would also be there. I'll get to that. It is said that he showed no emotion. And on the 4th of May, Justice Barry White would sentence him to seven years. He suspended the final year with a 100 euro bond for good behaviour. Here he was described as ashen face and his partner was in court with him. Just as Barry White would say, your son lost his life in circumstances where you chose to pick up a kitchen knife in the course of a struggle which appears to have developed out of a relatively trivial argument between you. It is a recognised fact that all too often the murder trials that appear in the central criminal court arise out of a fatal stabbing. He was saying this in terms of um, like the knife culture. I am firmly of the view that the message must go out loud and clear that the courts will not tolerate the use of knives and that the courts have respect for human lives and dignity, even if others do not have that respect for human life. Personally, I do not understand the mentality of a person who picks up a knife in the course of a struggle. I would always argue that when people say like that they've got a manslaughter. I always think like if you if you if you pick up a knife, like you're you're adding a completely different element to the to the fight. Even like regardless of if you think you're you're going to kill them, like you're you're adding an unfair advantage to the fight. It's not something that I think you would do in the right mind. And this is the thing, mate. Like he probably didn't mean to actually stab him. Was it, it? They were they were angry and they were fighting and they were locked and everything else, but. Firstly, the mentality of taking up the knife, as uh, as me and Barry have said, but also just the chaos, I suppose, and like if this tiny caravan. Imagine the type of fight, like it's imagine me and Kelly in that situation. Even you know, just it is said that at one point Thomas did try to blame Kelly, and I don't know, like was she trying to say that it was her who done it, or or some other element to it? No, I'm not one hundred percent sure how much he served. One source does say that he appealed it and the sentence was reduced and obviously with time saved and all that he was released in 2005 and he went back to England. And now we will come to his partner. The one I'm going to talk about now it is said that they were together 10 years which I am then assuming was the partner who was in court with him. So June Buttle. He was in a relationship with her and it was said that it was not a great relationship. And the next part of our story will take place in Doncaster, Sheffield. At the beginning of this part of the story, Thomas is a used car salesman. He doesn't have a lot of money and he spends time like crashing at friends' houses or sleeping in his car. So I have to assume at this point that he didn't live with June. Maybe the next part influenced her in becoming more serious in a relationship, I don't know. I'm always one to believe someone when they say you know things have happened or whatever but I kind of feel like she makes it out that he's like very abusive and all this and I don't I'm not doubting it but if he's that controlling and that abusive and all right why is he sleeping in like on a friend's couch in and not sleeping in yours like why is he not just like no I'm staying here I'm not leaving in 2009 Thomas would receive 150,000 euro compensation for the abuse that he endured in one of the care homes so i'm sure if you're in ireland you know all about that so basically if you're outside so basically all the abuse that happened um in the care homes in in the laundries in in all the different stains on our history there would have been um like different things done to get compensation and so obviously because he had endured the abuse he had gotten the compensation so this is this is kind of just to give you an idea of that with his money, or with some of the money, he then bought a caravan and two cars. And then he actually had plans for the rest. So on New Year's Day 2010, the 54-year-old visited his son in Thorn, which is also in Doncaster. 
and like that was telling him about his plans and stuff this would be the last time that he was seen by family members so his plan essentially had been to move to portugal and open a bar with his money and so he would have told his family about this so thomas then disappears doesn't you know no one hears from him and at first they think it's because he's already left like that he just kind of fecked off but after a couple of months when they hadn't heard from him they went to both the south yorkshire police and the portuguese police so initially this was treated as a missing persons case but in 2012 it was updated to a murder investigation his car was not found so it was actually a left-hand drive volkswagen golf and it looked like like it properly like looked like a little boy racer's car tinted windows big exhaust alloy wheels everything so like it was a distinctive car to go missing so there didn't seem to be a lot of information or progress until 2013 june buttle who's now 54 was arrested along with her son 36 year old jason taxter she would be charged with murder the following year however there wasn't enough information to keep her son and he was released the case would go to trial in march 2015 june would tell the court that Thomas was abusive in all ways. He was domineering. He was sexually abusive. She said that he would make her work as a prostitute. And again, I'm not trying to demean or belittle anyone's um, experiences. But just like when you think about how him sleeping in, sleeping in cars or on his friend's couch and stuff. If he was that like controlling, I don't know why he wouldn't just be like, I'm taking over the house. Like, maybe I'm just making too little of it. I find it very coincidental and the more I'm reading out my notes and stuff I'm uh, I'm like oh how did I not think of that like 2009 he gets the money and we're barely in 2010 and he goes missing she would then go on to plead guilty to manslaughter fraud and conspiracy to prevent the burial of a corpse she had used his Facebook she had like his logins and stuff so she would use his Facebook to put posts up basically being like I fecked off to the Algarve, like, I want nothing to do with any of these anymore, I'm living, like, living my best life, you know, too many bad memories in England and Ireland and I'm not coming back. So she would admit that Thomas wanted to move to Portugal to open the bar and he wanted her to go with him and she didn't want to, she said no. But then she was also saying, like, you're keeping the money from me. Now I kind of think, I think if you got that money because of such a horrific thing in your life, I don't think anyone gets to tell you what you do with that money. And if you want to piss it away, I'm not going to tell you you can't. So they argued. She said, this is a couple of days before New Year's. And that she, he got angry because she refused to have sex with him. So he stormed off. She would then admit to killing. She obviously had to admit that they killed him. So she says that on New Year's Day, he was beaten over the head and then that his body was rolled up in a carpet and gotten rid of by her and an accomplice and like some of the sources even say at her son's home she won't name this she will refuse to name the accomplice but like i mean it does make a genius she would also refuse to tell anybody where his body was but it appears that buddle told different friends on different occasions what she done so there was a John Ward who actually lived with Buddle and then her other friend Lorraine and they would both say that she said that they cut up his body and put it on a fire. Buddle would attempt to access Thomas's bank accounts however she did not know that the compensation money had been put into an Irish bank account one she did not know any of the details for. So she had to make do with the £400 that was on him when he died and his benefits which totaled over £1,100. Buttle would be jailed for 16 years. Okay, so after that, obviously, she's put away. We all know who the other person was, but they've no proof. Jason Thaxter had been with a girl called Rebecca Duggan, and they'd been together since they were 16 and had kids. She would say, again, like that, that he was abusive and controlling and that she was terrified of him. However, in June 2015, she would move on, get out of that relationship and begin a new relationship and she finally felt safe and so she went to the police she told them how thomas and buddle came to their home on extra road wheatley at around lunchtime she said thomas was speaking about portugal and that he sounded really you know excited and that june did not seem enthusiastic about it she would hear june telling her partner jason how bad thomas was treating her shortly after this she got a taxi with the kids to visit her sister 
and she didn't come home till 10 p.m. that night. She was surprised to see Thomas's car still outside, but when she went in, there was no sign of him. June and Jason were there. When she questioned this, June said that Tommy has left me, but that he left me the car and I'm giving it to Jason. But she said that his laptop was in the kitchen. June was using his mobile, obviously trying to do her little logins. And so she didn't really get into it. She just put the kids to bed and she, then she went to bed. Not long after, Jason came in and told her everything that happened. He would say that they hit Thomas Groom over the head with a golf club, that they choked him, that they chopped him up and that they burnt his body. On a fire in the back garden, who, <laughs> if my neighbours were having a fire in the back garden, I'd be like, what's going on? It is believed that they did it for the money. The first login to Thomas's account was at 10.22pm. Taxton would deny all of this. In fact, he said that he wasn't close to his mum, but that Rebecca was, and that it was her and Rebecca who done it. But the police believe that, you know, a woman of their sizes couldn't have swung the bat or the golf club or whatever hard enough to take down Thomas's size. His case would go to trial in February 2016 and it would last five weeks. He would be found guilty by the jury of murder and conspiracy to prevent the burial of a corpse. In December 2016, he was sentenced to a minimum of 30 years. Detective Superintendent Lisa Ray of the South Yorkshire Police said that they hoped that the pair would do the right thing and tell them where his body was. On the 15th of August 2023, Jason Thaxter was found hanging in his cell on the B-wing of HMP Waymore. An inquest has been opened but I haven't seen any more information on it yet. So the only one who could possibly know now where Thomas's remains are is June and whether she'll ever talk. It's just a bit of a sad case, like, and don't get me wrong, because there are people who have gone through horrific things in the industrial schools and don't go on to have these type of lives, so I'm not trying to completely use that as an excuse, but it's just, it's just a horrible, it's just a sad life and it's a horrible waste of life. Guys, that is it uh, for this case. When I read about it, I thought it was a bit mad, so I thought I'd share with you guys. Let me know what you think. I definitely think it's too coincidental. She wanted the money and... Maybe she would have been happy for him to feck off to Portugal, but she didn't want to be left with no money. She thought she did er deserved some of it. Maybe she did, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Guys, I actually did want to say she's I'm having a good few emails coming in and I really like it because it's either it's either someone just kind of having a bit of a conversation or they're actually suggesting cases or I actually had a I actually had a fem family member of a case that I done um, get in touch to kind of just say that they were that they were um very happy with the video and stuff and obviously that means the world because you know i would hate to think that um their loved ones you know the the, the people who have lost that their loved ones thought that i was being disrespectful or making light of anything um so to, to when i received that it was really nice but yeah no so if you have any like case suggestions or you just want to kind of discuss something with me if if you are involved in a case and you don't even want to say you know comment or anything publicly you can always email me and chat about it i have had people do that so um yeah that's all i'm gonna say please do subscribe if you haven't already done so we're we're trying to get the five yeah so guys that's it i'm not gonna do any much more rambling thank you as always for your support and yeah we shall see you in the next video thanks bye